welcome back! I'm doing lots of finger and hand things on these transitions today. I don't know. I'm <laughs> just feeling extra Italian. I gotta get my hands going on the broadcast. I don't know. I like it. But I'm glad that you're here for that, Austin. Always. I don't know. The energy is just a little bit off kilter today. So we're just going with it. We're rolling with it. We're vibing with it. And how like about it. this? Battle for the Buckeye State. Buckeye Cod from the Ohio State University now playing up against Ohio University. Um, I think for all intents and purposes, this shouldn't be close. However, Ohio just put together a great run during the Columbus Game Arena land that just happened this last week. Saw a bunch of it on Twitter. A lot of people were surprised. They took down teams that they would probably have no business beating in normal situations. So maybe things are clicking for these guys. Maybe, you know, uh, putting together at least the run is something that you could build off of. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a bit of time to kind of get on the same page, get everything going, get the years working. So maybe they're at that point. We'll have to see. But uh, it's certainly going to be a tough matchup, I think, uh, coming in here for the Bobcat Esports boys, uh, without a doubt. It hasn't really shown too much, at least within the CCL season. But maybe they can turn it around. Still a little season left here for them, Alan. The way it goes, man, sometimes things just click for you. But mm -hmm. let's get to know the rosters for both of our two squads. For the Bobcats, we have Lux, ta-da, Icy, and Excuse. I, I pulled out the ta-da a bit sooner than I than I wanted to, but <laughs> I should have been like, and now revealing the roster. Ta-da! Oh. No, that would have been good, right? Hey, With, while the transition was good. happening. Wait, can we run that back? Can we try that again? No, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Full juniors, though, Austin. That's the big thing about this yeah. team that is brand new to College Cod this year. Yeah, that's right. Not a lot of experience here, at least within the league. Uh, so, you know, coming out here, having some fun, trying to make some waves and, you know, uh, have a chance to be able to build off of uh, a future uh, here uh, for as far as maybe this entire team uh, going forward. But, yeah, we'll see what they can do. So far, haven't really been on the ball uh, when it comes down to at least the records, but there is still a lot more time left to put something together here. And obviously a win tonight would be a great start. Indeed the case. On the other side, though, for the Buckeyes, it's been a while since we've been able to talk highly about Ohio State COD. And, well, we've got it this time around. I mean, it's, you have to go all the way back to Black Ops 4. I think the last time that we really looked at the Ohio State University squad and said, hey, these guys are contenders. But number 15 in the power rankings, you've got Round, Jax, Juice, and Enigma. Again, lots of upperclassmen on this roster. And it looks like things are finally starting to click for them here in this title. Not a doubt. I mean, these guys are respawns, man. Woo, my goodness, they take over maps. Um, I think control specifically has when they're where they've looked the best. And a lot of that comes through 1v1 gunfights, like we were talking about in the previous series after a couple of stellar performances. So, I mean, this is a tough team to beat. Every single name I feel like on here um, is, is going to be a tough gunfight, no matter how you look at it. Indeed. And just kind of talking about, you know, where Ohio State has been kind of a little bit faltered. You look at the region, they lost a map five to Farmingdale State. They lost a map five to Brock, which was a, bit, a big surprise. That was a, mm. a, considering where Brock is right now, that was a huge surprise. And then like everybody else in the division, a 3-0 loss to Fisher College. So they have yet, I think, to play Akron, if I'm not mistaken, or did they beat them? Uh, no, they beat them 3-1. So 3 yeah, yeah they've, they've really only lost the top two teams in their region. And then the surprise loss to Brock University. Otherwise, they've been pretty polished and clean against everybody else in their, uh, their region at the moment. They have been, and I mean, that loss versus Brock University was also, you know, map five round 11. So went the absolute distance and had a chance to be able to pull that one out too. But we take a look at the records and, uh, and you can clearly see that uh, the Buckeyes are clearly favored through just about every single game mode here. Uh, but we'll see if there's maybe anything the Bobcats can look to put together here. And maybe, you know, after the run you were kind of talking about and alluding to, like maybe there is a game mode that they're starting to find a little more favor in. And if I'm not mistaken, I want to say that throughout the groups of that land, it was just best of threes, and they were winning a lot of them 2-1. So that would significantly say that their ice and control has been has been high. Um, sure. But the thing about that is, you know, again, you're going up against a 7-1 control team in the yeah. Buckeyes. So, you know, again, just looking at the records, you would think this would be a wash. But I think just based off the recency bias, who knows? Uh, you know, it is one of those things where, like, you find one thing out, you figure out one thing, you know, your team is communicating a little bit better, you're polished, you're playing with a little bit more aggression, and everything just starts to click, and you start to get in that yeah. <laughs> that COD term, that flow state, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you start to really kind of feel how things are going. There's a lot of subconscious energy where you just know what's going to happen before it even happens, and maybe that will stick with Ohio as they look to play up against their rivals and the Buckeyes. Yeah, I was waiting for that one to come out on broadcast. <laughs> it's, it's been a, it's, it's a funny one to throw out it as is. of late, but we'll take a look at the maps coming on in here for us. Mercado, HP, Embassy, Search and Destroy, little Hotel Control, and then if need be, we'll go to a second Embassy on the hard point, and we'll finish off on Hotel and the Search and Destroy.
The Mercado first is one of those that I actually like this as far as, you know, what the Bobcats could possibly do on this map. Just because it's one of those maps that, you know, it really does come down to being a little more clinical about how you approach situations because the choke points are so thin. Mm. So it does take a little bit of like a, okay, we're trying to break here. Let's make sure we don't do anything crazy. You don't really have the opportunity to make solo hero plays. I think that's the biggest thing. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. Whereas for Ohio State, again, everything should be turning up. <laughs> Buckeyes here for them. We'll see if that actually happens. Buckeye is, have you ever seen a Buckeye in real life? You ever seen nope. what, what Buckeye nope. looks like? It's a, it's a nut. It's not a flower, but I use it in terms of flower. So I don't know. All right. <laughs> That's good to know, I guess. I'll write that one down. Alan. <laughs> will you actually? <laughs> no, I, I won't. But uh, I will in theory. Or yeah. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll move on. We'll jump in, and <laughs> it's a good start. It's a good start for Buckeye Cod. Now, the one thing I will say is that the Bobcats were really excited to be on stream tonight. They were like, they were amped that they got the, the opportunity to come on. I was hoping that would maybe mean that they're going to be like, you know, a little bit better when it comes down to playing on stream and just maybe having a little bit of kind of that additional pressure. But so far, hasn't been the case. And Buckeye Cod also have the secured rotation to be too. But a chance to try to set something up. Again, that's the whole thing map because of how pocketed these hard points are. It's all about trying to play for traits. Ohio State, though, winning out in the long range. Gunfights Jax over the top. Gets to his fourth kill in a row. And the Buckeye is very rapidly up 50 to 2. Still early days. And I think it's neutralization of the potential streak holder into Jax. Forces this round to have to make a play. He's pushed back from Tex, but the Bobcats still cannot find their break. Stun is on the way in. And, oh, Icy just has to have that one, doesn't he? So 27 yeah. seconds will be forfeited. And now you have to start rotating over. And Jax is already here off of his spawn out. Causing problems to the Bobcats. All right, but they finish him off. They get Jax out of the equation here for the Tin Hill. And now a chance to respond. And we'll see if they can maybe do a little bit of zoning here. Lux is just kind of playing inside the courtyard. Going to be able to find a drop shot here onto another. So this is some good spacing here up front. Now you got a bit of control. It's a heavy stack inside with someone up top here with an AR. Have a chance at least to lock it in. You're going to need it as you've only got two seconds. But on paper, this setup is actually pretty solid. Lux keeping dark safe. Icy over the top. Just trying to play a forward defender, but he gets stunned. Juice picks him apart. Lux trying to come back to the gunfight, but is also neutralized rapidly. So excuse from up top. Uh, can only get one. And, well, the break attempt for the Buckeyes nearly flawless as they get in for over 100 points already. Yeah, it's about perfect. Juice just kind of lines up three as his teammates all go in there first for him. And Jax is back to setting up and finding himself into key positions and enigma's like listen you guys probably got that unlock i'm just gonna start to make some moves he's gonna get a wild surprise for the back alley as three players all fly out and challenge to try to shut down the rotation and they do so successfully so once again they get here first but can they zone that is the question deuce already trying to make his way in towards the front of arbor shop before the hard point opens oh boy there's no alarm bells ringing there Trade's not in, though. Round on the backside of the corner has been found out, so he can't hold this angle deep. And as Barbershop opens, it will be Ohio in first. Nades over the top, decent. And how about that? Tada's able to actually find elimination onto the remaining Buckeye members. So things looking decent here for the Bobbies. Trying to hold on closely, but aw, uh, just did not expect the negative to be prone. And with that, the Buckeye is just eventually able to overwhelm, neutralize the hard point for a time, and it forces the Bobcats to not have to make a play forward. Yeah, they're here, but... Oh, it's a team kill from the trophy system. Always hate when that happens, but maybe it doesn't matter. I see. Let's find himself a good moment there, and he's still got his teammate Tada inside the point. Try to contest the back 25. But Enigma coming on through. We'll be able to finish him off, and crap time this time will go the way of the Buckeye Cod Boys as they're now going to run away with a bit of a lead here, and Bobcat Esports are going to have to put something together here and need a hold. Yeah, and this is one of those moments that we always talk about where if you're going to give away this much amount of time, you have to be able to successfully push off the rotation. And, well, Juice will take down two plus a teammate. Now he goes over to the finesse spot over the top of the table. Although it's a quick shutdown here from Ohio. Not bad for OU. Go four for one, full team wipe. Chance to get some time here on the uh, new courtyard hill. Yeah, they're here. Holding it down, they win the first, you know, kind of engagements. Haven't really seen that happen with some of the rotations. And they got a little info there with the stun, so could work out well for them if the kills follow. And Icy able to at least get one. Excuse, still up top. He's providing cover fire right from mid. Just needs to finish off the kills. He's good for one. Can he put together a second? Ooh. Yes, he can. Maybe the gun, he's starting to heat up just a little bit more as Excuse finds three. 
Not bad. Good lockdown here. So pushing away OSU pretty nicely. I see over towards the new hard point. Nades out. Not able to get the first gunfight win. Luxa, just not a not a smart challenge, unfortunately. Just too much window pressure from ARs. Juice down low has a lot of help around him, so he'll just kind of get to work trying to neutralize these choke points. As we get to a 65 to 162 game, Ohio State in control at topside cantina. And this cantina hill pretty much puts it away. If you don't find a swift break, you feel like. After get through Enigma, first step is done. Next step, finding the player up top, and they've done that as well. So round kind of left in the hard point right now. Does have some support through the back alley, but he's able to win his first engagement in the point. Trophy system looks to be down, keeping him nice, safe, and protected. Spawns come through in the back, and Buckeye Cod, they lock it down. First 30 seconds, all theirs. Yeah, looking pretty dangerous now for the Bobcats. Looking good for over 200 points. Rounds on five. Not that a streak would largely be needed to secure this lead, but if he gets it, it would for sure provide some sort of a nail. Juice beat down by excuse. So that will lead to the Bobcats now on rotation to parking pretty safely, and they've got trophy systems set up. It just comes down to can put together a bit of a perimeter here, and Icy with the first one to kind of do so over the top of the heady. Icy's been good, at least in a couple moments so far. Trying to lead the charge for his team. Tada! also could win in the back alley. Rather, back a warehouse, and now kills coming through for round, though. Thought I was got a lot to do, oh. <laughs> and round will just smoke him as he flies around the corner. Spawn's coming through in the back of 10 as they're going to try to flood through, but round's also pressuring them off of spawn. There's nine, looking for number 10. He's got a look on him, just needs to finish it off. 10 is there, round is on a spree. Oh, boy. And 11 isn't too far away either, but his teammate will beat him to the punch. Break is in. Not fully win here, but boy, will they be close. So you got to get this a hit if you're the Bobcats, and, well, just no kills coming their way. So now we have to wonder, what was, you know, did they have the, you know, the, the MJ special stuff like Space Jam had, you know, in the second half? Is that like their land juice? Because <laughs> at the moment, whatever was working for them in Columbus is not quite turning up yet, at least against this Buckeye squad. I just feel animals, you know. Some players you never certainly know. play better on land. But maybe just need a warm-up game, too. You know, maybe just got to get one to get going as Buckeye Cods got going really quick and never stopped going. <laughs> it's a 250 to 81 closeout, and that's as clean as you'd ever like to see a Mercado hardpoint here for them. Very well done and controlled the entire time. Yeah. And there are a couple of moments in there where we could really put the label perfect on, I think, for how OSU were trying to formulate their breaks. Their hold attempts look really solid. And it really was only... You know, a couple of individual moments from OU that really kept them in some of those hard points. That one in particular from Excuse. We got 15 and 11 of them were non-traded, so not bad. Just when he couldn't find himself a 1v1 gunfight that he won, it was a little bit of a blunder situation where he's just getting kind of caught up. So tough scenes right there, but OSU looking as strong as we figured they would. Very clean in the first hard point. Across the board. Across the yep, board. right across the board and... I mean, uh, it's just tough. I think, you know, I brought up the point, like, it was the first time on stream. You know, maybe he's got to get the jitters out of the way, map one. That could be the case. Either way, it is pretty much all Buckeye caught, as we were saying. I mean, if you're watching, you know. It's all highlights here that are mainly going to come from just about one team's point of view. Kills were just so clean. Round goes on that 10 spree as well. You know, Icy had a couple of good breaks here and there, but it was just, you know, a little bit too late, I feel like, to get going. Yeah, that's definitely the case in... It's one of those things you look at kind of how each team was playing. And again, it was very rare that we saw it, but the moments that we did where the Bobcats were set up with some breathing room around a hard point, there wasn't that extra layer forward, right? Like I feel like very regularly, even at this level, we see great hard point teams. They're always creating a forward line of scrimmage, forcing your opponents to go through a couple of members. It kills off extra time. It secures time on your side. Yep. We saw that from the Bob uh, from from the Buckeyes rather, but the Bobcats just could not fight. I think fully trust their setups. So tough scenes overall, especially when you've got players like Juice and Jax doing the things that they did. Round hit was eighteen and eight with ten in a row at the end, and he didn't have a single kill non traded. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> oh, That's that impressive. is impressive. Eighteen out of eighteen, hundred percent. Wow, just not getting trades here on the other side for him, and he's sitting in the hill while doing it. So it's not like he's just like posted up mid map, like cutting off people, right? Like from far away with subs. Like like he's in the action, finding objective kills and just soaking up time for a squad. Probably would have gotten you know way more kills if it wasn't for 
him kind of just sitting on the hill and his teammates doing what he probably wanted to do in some of those situations. <laughs> yeah. But either way, man, not much you can really say about that map one. That is uh, that is all one-sided. Buckeye Cod are good, but S and D. This is at least one of the weaker ones for Buckeye Cod. So you know maybe you can start to punish them a little bit, pick them apart in this game mode potentially. Yep. Have to have it. But Embassy Search and Destroy is one of those maps that, again, if you come out of the gates, especially on the offensive side of the bomb, and you play slow, and you give up that mid lane, yes. the round may, may be over. But we saw that so many times. I think the last time you and I casted in CCL was just like, mm -hmm. you can't just give up that mid lane. We definitely saw it in the first day of uh, action at Optics uh, Open. We did. Was just, yeah, we had a lot of teams that were, you know, number 45 playing number 52 in the pro point seedings and it was just like you can't just give away that space for free here so that's the first thing i'm looking at here for ohio is what can they do to try to control that mid lane will it be things like a sniper rifle down the mid cut or will it be things like smgs trying to get forward and towards bathroom you know those are elements that you have to expect will be there for ohio state and coming in too like, like one thing i think we were also talking about is you know kind of only like the bomb carrier ever crossing while like three ars kind of like set up you yeah know, like up yeah, top yeah, yeah. or yeah. kind of over by the right like i think it's really difficult to like ins like consistently rely on just the one player carrying the bomb to get across and to get a successful plant off unless they're just never ever contesting you um have to see you know, someone go with them or like you said just double chow through mid get some stun nades out do not let them kind of shrug you off of the push gotta get across cleanly See what happens, though. Need a bounce back here for the Bobcats. They get a little bit worked in the map one, but first time on stream, you know, getting the jitters out of the way. Maybe this is their game mode. Maybe this is their chance to try to even up the series here versus the Buckeyes. I feel like you kind of have to have it too, right? I mean, especially with how the slaying went in the first map. like And their control record. Kind of, yeah, and yeah, and their control record being 7-1. Yeah. We'll see. We'll be Ohio State on the offense first. We'll get those nameplates turned around for you. And how about this? Little double SMG aggression shut down initially by Tada. So first two kills, good for the defense of Ohio. And the bomb is also down as a part of that. So the Buckeyes are in a pretty terrible spot here. Yeah. Difficult to work out of. Round kind of needs to find a pick, or his teammate does. And look at this. Double push through up top. Round picks a good time to go down low. And creating a bit of noise, you know, could get them wondering, could get them searching. But with 40 seconds left, I have to see them start to work here. And it looks like Jax maybe ate an aid. Sure seems that way. A follow-up came through. There's this. Yep. Yeah, he definitely ate an aid. Because <laughs> here's the rest of the utility from the Bobcats. Jax shut down. Round by himself. Not a lot of time for this 1v4. That sounds nearly earned, but no. Top of the stairs, Bobcats clean. And how about that? A little double up from Tada to open up the round to stop the early aggression. That was huge. Really everything here. He gets three to finish it off. Finds the last one. His round's kind of left to last alive. But yeah, that first double up, I mean, everything. And, and I, mean, I talked about, too, you know, not just sending one player across. They don't just send one player across, but no trades end up following. And that really is a difference maker. When a two-piece like that, you keep the other two AR players kind of trapped inside of office. They're usually good to lock down that defensive round. Yeah. At least she should be, in theory. Should be. Should be, could be, would be. And I like this. OU getting aggressive over the middle of the map. There is a sniper rifle on the cross, but it does not connect. Tada will go for the early plant. I love this call as well, but look at the threat from the Buckeyes. Round will throw a couple of shots from the deep side of the embassy, but everyone else is working on a retake in towards admin. Juice, the only problem with this is he doesn't have any dead sound, so he cannot move all that quickly. Oh, as the door pops open, he knows he's got excuse nearby. Does he predict the corner, though? There's the shots out. And yeah, the kill's in for Juice. Now the 1v1. Dead sound still not earned. Stun up top. Does not land, but Juice has the idea. He knows he's playing up here somewhere. Burst through the door. Here's the gunfight. No! How about it? Ohio with two in a row. Nice little 1v1 clutch up. I'm liking what they're doing right now, man. Like, everything coming down to just getting, like, the fast plant, forcing the hand of the defense. Round isn't able to kind of stick in that back area there at the back of tennis. See, you know, he only gets a look at the initial push and then can't really stick around. Doesn't have a trophy system. Has to worry about kind of the utility that can follow up in that play. And nobody's kind of overwatching, you know, the plant. So, as soon as mm -hmm, that bomb yep. goes down, everyone's safe to back up, play their life. Very clean so far here with these opening rounds and Buckeye Cod's going to have to do something to change up the tempo or do something a little bit more, you know, aggressive, maybe potentially to try to work for some of these trades. 
and this very well may be an evaluation for the Buckeyes saying, we can't just get away with anything here against this OU squad. We have to pay them a little bit of respect. And everything slows down just a touch here on this long play. Jax is committing a lot of defensive attention in his direction as the bomb is simultaneously planted over towards B in a good isolation. Excuse gets the kill. And now Enigma predicted by Tada. That works out nicely. And even around the back, oh, Lux may have missed a chance there onto Juice. Yeah. Although he does get away. Well, I thought for a second he was about to take the gunfight as well. But as the defuse starts to come in, round is taken down. Ooh. And how about the Bobcats in the search? Oh, my. They just got to get the jitters out of the way, Alan. Just had to get that map one out. And they're here to play. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is insane. I mean, three kills, I think, total so far here on the other side. Like, like no kills are coming through. No trades to follow. Huge 1v1 gunfights. And they're playing with confidence. Like, that challenge from Tada just flying out like that, knowing he's isolated in the corner. Like, they're playing with confidence. They're feeling good. They're using teamwork to kind of break them down. Great usage of the utility as well to stop them and play for info. And right now, Buckeyes kind of look a little lost on Embassy. Yeah, I'll say. It's just, you know, they're getting countered in every single form of the word at the moment. And this time, once again, that aggressive hit through mid... Allows the Bobcats to get on. Juice is looking to contest. Oh, and he's missed his chance. Even stuns himself right here. Not good news, but the Buckeyes still flood forward. It's Enigma who gets two, but the immediate trades take us into a 2v2. So you've got Juice on a sub. Jax, who I believe is sniping. And Icy and Excuse still have a... Oh, no, he's... Oh, maybe he is still sniping. But Excuse and Icy have a really solid look to get across the map here. No, it's attack. Just kidding. Well, lots of time. Don't have to force a play just yet. Juice isolated, and the stun's going to connect. And, oh, and he's going to get out of there, and he will. That bomb's going to go down. I love it. Don't hesitate. Drop the rock. Try to play your life. You have at least a bit of a clutch spot being played for, but you just lost him. Now a 1v2 required. Juice not going to have any of it, and what a huge round here for Buckeye Cods. Nice play from Enigma to kind of kick off this entire round. A lot of sub-aggression too, right? I mean, that's an aggressive peak from Juice. Enigma flies out from the top by the look of it. Yeah. Plus, I believe you had Round kind of watching over through that mid-cut. So there's a lot of aggression there off the defense trying to counter what has been a pretty predictable opening offense where the Bobcats are just diving across mid, get the quick plant. That's a great way to try to put a counter out there. But the Bobcats still nearly get away with it. With the quick response, the quick trades, nearly pull off the 2v2. But as you mentioned, the Buckeyes get on the board. And now, what do you do offensively here? Because, mm. you know, your last offense really didn't find much success. Tried to go for the plant. You know, it got off, but there really wasn't a lot of help over the top. And now Jax is going to try to go to the scope. And, well, that's a difference maker here as the A defense is now thinned out completely. Yeah, I love that right there. It's a good play to Enigma. Oh, he's looking for maybe a play up mid. Does backtrack just to make sure the bomb does go down safely. But knowing the scope is in play, it's going to make it a lot more difficult to play a retake and to start to peak angles. But sooner or later, they're going to have to do it. And Juice now is also up top, and they have no idea. Yeah, and that's the other problem is that there's no way to really peak this if you're the Bobcats. You're waiting for Excuse to get all the way around the back, which Jax is watching. Yeah. And the round is over. Oh, God! <laughs> the round is over for sure. Wow. A little differently than I think we expected it to go, but... Sometimes that's just the way it be. <laughs> Very true. Oh, that's a, oh, I didn't realize Jax okay, got that kill. Shot. I Yeah, I thought that that was Juice that popped up and I got the tell. kill. I couldn't tell in the moment, but yeah, I'm glad I'm glad it showed the final kill cam here. That's for sure. But Jax over the top. He finds a couple in that round, and I was going to touch on it. I, like He gets you know that initial chow and, uh, round but previous when he's on the attack there with the attack in, in hand. This yeah. time, he kind of pulls out the sniper rifle and just kind of reads that they're going to chow that again. So, I'd love to see it. Mm. And Jax is going to keep it out. Why wouldn't he? Trophy down, four in a row, looking for some picks. Now look at the Buckeyes. Defensively, they are pushed forward. And this is where things become problematic. The Bobcats need to have good utility here to sniff out where these defenders around mid are. Because they, they currently have no line of sights whatsoever. They're just waiting and hoping more so than waiting that Ohio State is going to actually push into this setup, but there's no reason for them to. Jax is watching this cross, so there's yep. no reason for Juice or Nigma to make any sort of move whatsoever. You're going to need a tough gunfight or at least a good look on trying to get a read on the setup here, and they're actually going to 
Start to push through this alien. Enigma's getting a lot of info, and he wants to get out. He's going to get a good read. Almost takes out his teammate. But Juice does finish it off. And now Jax for the back with that scope. He's just been waiting for a play. And he'll finally be able to connect 3v2, and there's no time to work with. Oh, boy. The thing is, the kills are decent. Yeah, the kills are great. Now, Round is kind of stuck in the corner, but... If he gets this pick on the da, it may not make a difference because there won't be a bomb carrier. Oh, no. What's that motto? Oh, you? Oh, no. The way it usually goes is, oh, you? Oh, yeah. In case you're wondering, Austin, I know you don't do that in Canada. I, but We don't do that in Canada, no. But I think that's what they do at Ohio. So. <laughs> that or, know, o that or that's Oklahoma's. It's one of the two. That I knew it was, <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of the o It's one of the OU. It's either Ohio or Oklahoma that does that. I may have completely botched that, but I'm still committed as if I'm right. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Oh, man. Oh, what what a crazy... I mean, it was an 0-3... Or 3-0 start, rather. Responded with three rounds in a row. It's a 1v1 that... Or 3v2 probably shouldn't even have happened. And then almost a 1v1 that he's able to clutch up. It's just a lot of chaos in the s and today, oh. Alan. And Jack yeah. just, like, almost goes right between the legs there, it looked like. Just barely misses out on a pick. Gets a second look. Won't connect. But will be able to get this bomb down. And now he can back all the way up. Uh, and that kill off the exit. The locks is pretty key, and well, Jack's had an idea here that Icy was up top, just could not quite lock in the shot. But on the other side, needs to help his teammate here badly. Oh, and the shots from Round are so good, but Excuse does get the double. Long range shots from Enigma, nearly not fully there, but now we have a 1v1. 17 seconds of the clock, Enigma is going to have to check this. Excuse is going for the defuse, then hops off. Dead silence in. Enigma looking for the check over the top of the corner, now is playing with time. Oh, and he's just finessed it long enough, hasn't he? <laughs> And the knife. Oh, I love that right there, man. Oh, just, just nice reaction. As soon as you, you know, see him, he's got a peaky. He's got an over chow and he's ready for the over chow, but he's also just kind of sounding him the entire time. He's got Deddy on. So he knows kind of where he's going to be coming around and then goes to the knife to put him down four rounds in a row. Now, such a great start here, but you know, since that start, it just feels like everything has kind of fell flat and, Buckeyes are starting to put it together. Jax has been hot with the sniper, and you're just seeing a lot more proactive plays coming through here for the subs. I'm really glad that you said the words fell flat, because I was about to say, it felt like after Buckeyes got their first round, it's like Bobcats just started to, like, not trust what they were doing. Like, mm. a lot of, like, okay, wait a second. These guys are good. We got to hold off and play safe. And it's led to moments like this, where these gunfights just are really shaky. Nice track down, though, to die, Lux. Come out on top, two for one. Uh, Lux is... Squeezing every muscle, trying to get through the bathroom to see with the sniper <laughs> glint. But his excuse is able to kind of help out. He thought for a moment that Tadal was going to have an opening to plant, but round up top the knives. We go to a 2v2. And it's one of those moments when, like, someone has a sniper rifle. I don't know if you ever do, like, the IRL duck. Like, you know you need to prone, but you also, like, like actually <laughs> yeah. physically move as well. <laughs> I feel like that's what happens when a sniper's on. But round's in a good position. Put this round away, but he doesn't finish off the first kill, and he will at least back up and play his life. He gets some good information, but he's just waiting for Jax to get here. And, well, Jax is also forced off the high ground and now has to try to play retake with the pistol and sniper. The thing about this is the Buckeyes have actually now put the Bobcats upstairs, and they will they should know this. Oh, maybe they don't know that both of them are here, though. That's the problem. Up the staircase? No way. Does he get up here for free? Does he get the kill, too? Oh, my goodness. Where is the help? Oh, no. It's a complete meltdown. Both players were nearby, but there was no isolation, no commitment to who they were going to focus on. And individually, Round and Jax both find up the two kills with just enough time for the defuse. Yeah, it's like these can't keep getting away with it, right? Like, it's just like these little timings at the end of the round where, like you said, like they're, they're waiting for a challenge. Lux just flies out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... If he just finds the trade and then just, you know, peeks the bomb and just starts to snake it or just, you know, headies it and drops, right? Like, he has it. Like, it's his. Yikes. Maybe he thought he was already in the defuse. I don't I don't know. Maybe. Regardless, you have to play to trade your teammate there first. Always. I mean, the fact is he's got a pistol. You knew the challenge was happening for a while. Yeah. He was buying time. Yeah. Nades and stuns will not land on the jacks, but... Oh, you have well learned their lesson about peaking this angle defensively. A moment of reconsideration there for excuse, but oh no, round has gotten through mid map, or has he? Lux baits him into his trap. 
And now it's going to be a 4v3 favoring the Bobbies. Very reserved, and, you know, it pays off. They're waiting for someone to just make a play here on the attack, and they'll just pick them apart. It's still a lot of the map they're giving up, though, I will say. Like a lot of this mid-map control, they're not really going to have any idea on what's really going on. So they're very much playing for a retake on A, it would it seem, unless they get some sound cues and decide to challenge out. But more or less, this should be a free bomb plan. Oh, the defense is catching wind of this, though. Here comes potential shoulder. Juice has to hop off. Repositions. And if he can get this plant off, Jax could watch this from a very, very safe angle. So Ohio now all of a sudden have to kind of cut across the map. The Dodd does get maybe all the way through here. Dead silence, not in play. So he's going to be making a lot of noise, and the doors opening up will alert this defense of the post plant that, yep, there is some with our back line. Shots and kills come out. Lux now has to clear by himself, and he's not going to get the first. And, and really, no chance for excuse. Not to get the defuse, at least. And yeah, 13 seconds. Both players staying safe. Not looking good. Oh. Nope. And that will do it. Wow. Six rounds in a row. What a turnaround. Again, the S&Ds are... Don't try to predict them today. Just do <laughs> not do it to yourself. Uh, man. <laughs> it was looking so good, too. And I was, like, really praising them after that third round for, like, the confident plays. But... I felt like, the, like they stopped bringing that confidence, and I don't know if that was Jax bringing out the scope because he did find a lot of picks once he decided to swap off the tack. If that made them start to play a little bit differently, because you could see like some of like those final rounds, they were very reserved, giving up a lot of map patrol, which is not something you typically see on defense, even if they have a scope in their hand, right? So yeah. I felt like they started to lose a little bit of that once Jax started to open up that A lane. They had to kind of play back a little bit more and play a little bit more reactionary from that point on. And there was that moment in there again that we talked about it halfway through where it's just like the first three rounds were so well put together for Ohio. But it was like around sure. five, round six, where the Buckeyes put together two straight rounds and like everything changed all of a sudden for the Bobcats. It's like if you're OU, yeah. you know, you can't be that respectful of who's on the other side. Like you have to be able to still play your game regardless of what happens. And it just felt like things kind of got a little bit out of control. You know, players try to do something crazy or, you know, trying to, you know, maybe not do anything at all. They're just playing a little bit too passive. And you get moments like this where, you know, you just get finessed too long. And that mm -hmm. is obviously a one-for-one -one instance because the clock was a major issue there. But even with numbers in these late situation rounds, it's just like, why is Lux not helping here? Yeah, where's the help? He just flies out. Wow. Yeah, man. I don't know. That's a... That's a frustrating one to look back on even as a spectator because you just you feel like he's watching orange the only other way that he has up top is to come all the way around the back which there's no time to do or, or he's following up the ladder play so you just got to get there you just got to get that trade peak the bomb play your life but uh, yeah i think you're right like a couple of those occasions that 1v1 and at 2v2 uh, those were the the differential rounds i think within this within this map without a doubt yeah but Man, that, that one's really going to hurt. I think this was the one they needed to win, you know, going into the control, like we said, with the 7-1 record. Yeah, it's uh, tough prospects, to say the least. With, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's staggering. 3-1? I mean, what, where did that come from? 7-1? <laughs> I don't know where I was going with 3-1. I don't know where that even came from. Let's ignore that I said words for a second. But, I don't know, man. It's tough. Yeah. It's a tall ask here for Ohio. 1-7 overall. Again, they still have a yep. little bit of their schedule to play through, but not enough looking like they're going to be a bottom four team pretty much without a doubt. So they're going to play through the LCQ. Um, and this is a region that was a hard region. I mean, you've got Fisher, yeah. Farmingdale, Akron, all three great teams. This is Buckeye squad, top 15. Rutgers just made it in and out of the top 25. Uh, so you've got some solid squads in this, in this region and, well, didn't find a lot of help. So need to find a way to possibly extend the series through the means of the Buckeyes' best mode. 7-1 control is their record. We'll have that coming up next on the backside of the break. Don't go far. Welcome back there, friends, family, COD fanatics alike. We've got ourselves a battle of Ohio, Ohio University, and Ohio State University playing up against one another. But it's been all one-sided so far. Buckeye COD looking clean, looking calm. 2-0 up in the series and headed into their best mode. Uh, it doesn't pan out well for the Bobcats, I'd say. No, no, it does not, Alan. The S&D, I think we were looking at as the map that you kind of had to take here through the first three. 
uh, if you were going to have a chance because yeah this uh, next mode seven and one right here for the buckeyes and with the way that they've been playing so far you have to imagine that they have a pretty good shot of putting this away unless we see something we have it here from the bobcats coming into this hotel control yeah and it's just it's hard for let's be honest it, it's hard for us to put into perspective how the bobcats come out put them into a reverse sweep like it this on paper is a huge mismatch just flat out it is and you know the bobcat run that we saw or at least kind of witnessed in certain regards mm -hmm. uh on their you know recent land performance you sit there and say okay maybe this is you know a new bobcat squad but there's something about this online atmosphere that doesn't seem to be clicking for him after the three yeah. straight that they had uh, in the search and destroy, it was six straight after that. It's just not great news uh, through and through so far. So something's got to change. Something's got to change quick. And you just don't think it's going to happen here just to be plain about it. Yeah, it's tough, right? It's like you, you can't really just pinpoint one player because it can't just be one player to take down this Buckeye squad after what we saw on the hard point, right? Um, it's tough because you're just going to have to beat this team as, like as a team. And I think so far, based off what we've seen, like this Buckeye Cod squad is the real deal. So yeah, I, it's hard to play the other side, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. This control, while things happen in control, you could get slotted for the first minute, you know what I mean? And then, you know, 20 seconds left, boom, you get four down and capture the zone. So while things can happen, but this is not a map or mode rather that Buckeye Cod usually lose. So. I have to put something special together if it's uh, if it's gonna happen. That's basically what I'm getting to, Alan. We'll see what we uh, what we get our hands into here. Yeah, I think that's valid. Well, so we're not quite ready for the gameplay yet, so we'll uh, try to fill time with whatever we can. What do we got coming up next? I gotta remember. Yeah, We've got like High Point, Central, Central Florida. Okay, Central Florida. Yeah. Okay, so that's a matchup that is important for both those two teams, sitting kind of near the bottom of their region, trying to stay away from that bottom four. Mm -hmm. um you know it's been interesting i think kind of comparing this year's format to years prior i think some people really enjoyed the ability to kind of play an open-ended region to start and then your right. record you got separated um whereas i think that that hindered and kind of hesitated the inevitable <laughs> i think a lot of people had that to say so i kind of understand the idea of trying to get immediately into two divisions early um you know there's never going to be a perfect system for it but I think that this is probably the best overall start to it based on how we saw the qualifiers go, how the teams are shaking up both at the bottom of D1 and the top of Division 2. You know, I don't think we have like a St. Clair from last year in Division 2 that's like dominating everybody and they're probably going to start beating some D1 teams. I think the separation is yeah. pretty solid, but it definitely makes uh, an interesting dynamic kind of occur early because you finish in the bottom four of Division 1, all of a sudden you're in this whole new group of gameplay that you haven't seen yet. So... <laughs> It'd be curious, I think, to see how the playoffs shake up. Yeah, man, playoffs are always fun. It's just something different that comes, like, I don't know, when you get into that, that, that college COD playoff type of, you know, era or time, whatever it is. It just hits a little different, a lot more fun, everything's more intense. And, yeah, you go through those LCQs, you go through you know, some of those really early playoff matches, um, and things get completely wild. I mean, we've seen it, you know, year after year. Last year was a great example of just a lot of wild, unpredictable things kind of happening here and there, so... It's always fun, man. I agree. I like the format a little bit. You know, it's uh, it's it's good. And I mean, we have this many teams in CCL as well, uh, with you know a little bit of a different skill gap. You have to do something to make up for it. But uh, but overall, you know, definitely liked it. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Now we're out of things to talk about. So, <laughs> Subway sandwiches, I'm telling you, pepperoni, add it, power Talk play. Plus him. It, it's a, it's <laughs> chicken bacon ranch. We'll add go. Pepperoni. We'll go. Poof. Yeah, we'll we get each. Do. Know what we should do? We should go, and then you get mine, I get yours. Why don't we do that? <sighs> Doesn't that sound cute? You're, Sounds like dude, a cute little duo thing to do, right? It, that that would be cute, except for literally 24 hours ago, I made a tweet saying that like ham is the most is the worst <laughs> is the worst lunch meat. I what? hate I hate ham. I think the it is worst? the worst the lunch worst? meat. Worst? Yeah, I think it's the oh, worst man. lunch meat. Cancel this. It's terrible. Idea. The worst. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's I'm not a fan. Can't take that like, on my duo right now. Alan, even even the old school cold cut combo. You know, you think Happy Gilmore. You know, what I could go for I could nice, go for a cold tasty, cut. twelve inch cold cut combo. That has some bologna in it. I'm here for it, dude. <laughs> You're only spitting bologna right now, Kayon. Okay, dude. Well, 
you find me some <laughs> what this black forest ham is. Where where this Wait, black you forest know what that is. is? What is are it, these? Maybe where you, are these? Maybe you have different ham in the states. Maybe you just don't have. Well, the no, ham that, that's I, ham, no, I used to work at Subway, so I'm very familiar with the black forest ham. But like, find me a pig from the black forest it's and tell me the why forest, their ham okay? is different. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, not a ham fan. Control, into it. Lux, first one to fall. Semtex locks off the follow up, but Tadaz still gets in. I don't think you want the knife out. Swaps back over. AR's at range, keeping Ohio pretty limited, but Tadaz not stopping. And, well, eventually he will be forced off the zone just short of the first tick. Yeah, you got to think if the ARs were actually set up, maybe there would have been a chance. And, well, Lux doesn't finish off the first player there, running bottom bedroom. Now we'll turn our attention to the A zone. It's everything has basically been stuffed. Long range shots there for the double for Enigma. Players flying out of freezer have now been stuffed as well. And they have positioning inside of A to stop this next push as well. Yeah, I'll say. Ooh. Okay, they kills kill. through. That's a huge for excuse to clear some extra space in the kitchen as well. Juice has to be shut down here. You cannot let him make a play for free. Oh gosh, lots of tags, but looks like he will give up on it. Third ticket progress will be locked, and the Buckeyes will hold a three-life lead with a minute 45 on the clock here for the Bobcats to work with. They brought a little bit of flair so far, though, right? Like, they're taking some pretty aggressive challenges. I don't think they're playing very, or with a lot of fear right now. And looking like maybe some of that confidence we were seeing early in the S&D could be coming alive here for them, but will be caught down, uh, or cut down on some of the exits there out of the A point. Tada now going to do some work inside the bedroom. Needs to try to clear it out. Huge 1v1, but might want to wait for his teammates before he runs in. Definitely is a way for help because this is a dangerous stack up here for the Buckeyes. And if they find kills, they can take over the map. Oh, quick little pinch play from Juice. But him going prone actually only allowed him to shoot at the bootstraps of a couple of Bobcat members in front of him. Trades are still decent. Excuse. Looking to force a kill. And oh, boy. Just gets baited into a gunfight where Jax finishes him off. Now the Buckeyes are up eight. We're down to 55 on the clock. Bobcat's still trying to clear top bedroom. That has been the problem. The stuns come through. A double chow. A lot of information, though. And Juice could follow it right up. They, they, I mean, every single member, it feels like, here for Buckeye God, is, like, in and around the bedroom constantly. They've had, like, three members at least. And Juice, for one, snaps for the second. Gets the reload off, and the support comes through, and then almost peaks for the third, but weakens him up, makes it an easy trade there for Jax, as another push will be shut down, and now only nine lives remaining with 30 seconds left. I like the idea, though. You know, give yourself a little heat check. Yep. Take the 1v everything. Enigma now on three up top. And once more, the Bobcats, oh, they are just completely distraught. No semblance of a setup here. Individual 1v1s, where the Buckeyes have been coming out on the majority of them. No problems, but... How about this? Ohio, a couple of kills. Juice trying to shut it all down himself. Oh, my. He gets three. A chance for Lux to touch, but cut down on the cross. And the Buckeyes will still get into position defensively. 15 playing three. Stuns land, and Ohio cannot touch in time. 1-0 up. Go the Buckeyes. And it is always, like, a little bit risky, I feel like, to stack three members inside a bedroom. Because if you do get cleaned out, like that player on back desk, like, if he drops two, you're going to spawn over by A. As soon as they start to get some presence up top and start to move forward. So it can be dangerous, but when you win all of your gunfights and you play trades beautifully like we just saw, then it works out just like it did, where you never actually get a clean look at the zone because there's always somebody inside a bedroom. So very well done here for Buckeye Scott. They come through and they recover off of that really nice heat check start there from Bobcats as well. Yeah. Tough scenes. The Bobcats need to put something together here on their defense, and they're going to split, go 2-2 off the rip. Not often you see something that looks like this. And his excuse drops, so does Tada. That leads to Ohio State on for free at A. Not looking to do too much more past this. They're looking for the quick stack, quick success, and pending they hold off this next defensive hit, they're going to have it. First blood, though, good. And the follow-ups, how about this from Ohio? Good breakdown, and yeah, Juice is now through, and that's going to allow spawns to come out. Oh, this could get dangerous quickly. And the second tick yeah. did get locked, by the way. That's right. It did get locked, and yeah, they're just not going to expect Juice here. He's already at the back. They at least trade him out one for one. And still presence is here, but overall, it looks like the defense is able to get back before anything ends up coming through. But all round is able to play <laughs> his life. That should have been a trade. And I was thinking it was all going to be fine and dandy, but not anymore. Buckeye Cod, they're back, and they have some numbers to work with. Oh, don't they ever. Nades are also starting to land and connect. Ohio stayed on towards the B zone. Bobcat's looking to fight back, though. Lux for the first round, hoping he gets a shot from 
Someone crossing in front, but not going to happen. The third tick of progress is depleted at the same breath over at A. So now all of a sudden, the Bobcats have a three-life lead, and the clock goes down to 42 seconds, and Ohio State's looking to make a play to B? Bold decision. Enigma gets the first, no worries, but there are two Bobcats up top in the bedroom, and they may be able to successfully defend this on their lonesome. Clearance is good on the one. Nades tag another, but Jax deciding if he wants the gunfight or not is still kind of finessing around the outside of this play. And in the meantime, there's no one on. This clock is down to 26 seconds. You got to go. Yeah, A's going to have to be the target, right? The spawn's starting to come through inside of Kitchen, so you have to imagine they should be able to move over to A. No defender is going to be there to stop it, so that should be their extra minute. Meanwhile, Bobcats are still kind of struggling to get inside of Bedroom. Now, finally, the kills will come through at B. They'll start to deplete that tick. And there's a minute 15 on the clock to work with, but so far the defense has actually held its own. Yeah, sure has. Can lives be possibly what Bobcats use to stop this offensive play? Big hit from the Buckeyes around the back. How in the world has round one that gunfight? Oh, what another? He gets a second? Goodness. <laughs> okay. Now Lux is in a pretty dire spot, just trying to play his life for as long as possible. It's going to forfeit the defense on B for now. Clock will stop. First tick being made. But Lux has gotten himself into a good position. He's got some good help as well. The Bobcats looking to set back up. Oh, the timing there, a little bit unfortunate for him. Player comes up top, finally cleans him out. Round, though, still doing what he needs to do. In and around the back, will finally end up dropping there to IC. Enigma now wants to search forward. There's one. There's Whoa. two. No, he doesn't finish it off. Only able to come up with one, and with seven lives left, and still two ticks to go with limited time. I mean, it looks like the defense is in a good position. Just need to hold on to this kind of double spot you have set up right mm. now in top bedroom. Some of this offense just feels a little careless from the Buckeyes, if we're being honest with one another. The Bobcats are punishing. Juice throw in the back. That's silence. Oh, it's an easy win. Does he expect the second? No, not quite. Trades are in. 13 seconds on the clock. Eight plays, four, and that may be... The round securing kill right there from Icy on five, by the way. Yeah. And yeah, wow. Okay, great hold here for the Bobcats. And I think for Ohio State, you take a really hard look at yourself in the mirror and say, we need to play these guys a little more respect because it's continual hits towards B just were not working out. I'm with you. And I mean, like there was almost a moment in there where I was really worried on the defense because it, it, they had committed four members over by A. And, you know, when you do that, when you split all of your members on one side of the map, that was also filthy there from IC. But when you split all your members on one half of the map, right, they're going to start to spawn over by B. But despite getting the close spawn, they still got there to play a retake. If they were able to bring some of that in the hard points, man, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. You'd have a much different series right now. But so far, so good, man. We're seeing a lot of good plays. And IC needs to earn this streak. Needs to find this final kill to lock in six. Yep. Have to set him up for it. How much of a difference maker could this cruise missile possibly be? First blood good for Ohio State. Second, third also following. And IC's in a little bit of trouble. Does stay alive. Needs some help, though, as... The Buckeyes are going to control all of this lower angle at bedroom. IC gets a couple of shots in, only frees up the kill to Tada, though. In the back, Jax holding on to luggage hallway. And he's just going to do just that. Not moving anything further forward. Stun should land on him, but Round's got his cross. If anyone tries to flip back around, IC did get to six, but Ohio State sufficiently hold, only dropping two members along the way. Yeah, there's a lot of lives right now that you're losing. And you got to play a little bit tighter. You got to play for some trades. And you can't let Juice pick a couple apart and then get away with his life. Need to find him at least cleanly. First one, no problem. Juice gets out. Ready to reset and go for the second. And, well, it's going to be a double challenge, But it does force a team kill. We're still able to get a little bit more work done. And with 20 seconds left, A's going to have to be the target. And they got to worry about this flank. Yeah, sure do. Good read. Yep. That I gets the opener. Second follow-up, though. Round is able to eliminate one. This will stall the progress at A from coming through quickly. Second member on. That will lead to the full progress. Good follow-up from the Bobcats off spawn. Minute 22 on the clock. 23 playing 18. And the Bobcats are going to push through into Chandelier. And Ohio State's going to be a little bit split defensively here. Although they do get at least some sort of a read that there is going to be Bobcat presence in the background. Follows up. Nice shots. Good help as well. Yeah. And that will be good for the hold. And Jax, in the meantime, gets on to five. Oh, it's four down. And they're going to spawn right inside of Kitchen. Luggage spawn being blocked. Round runs right to mid. He knows where they're coming in from. And, yeah, not looking good right now for the Bobcats. 
low on lives, only got 11 left to work with. You just need one good push. We've seen it so many times this year, but with the way Buckeye Cod played their last defense, not going to be easy to work them out of bedroom. And so far, Enigma just found two. Yeah, not looking good here. I mean, 21 playing nine, I think, is the bigger problem. The second big problem is you've got 30 seconds remaining. But one good wipe, and Jax is kind of allowing them to get through. Maybe trying to play for the streak a little bit too much. Gets to kill number six. Must have score streaks on pistols. Out there's kill number seven, and the follow-up is there. First tick is locked in. Ohio not done yet either, by the way. Enigma's on low HP. So Icy will jump on, but as he gets tagged by nades, the follow-up will easily come through to confirm the kill. And now it's last chance saloon for the Bobcats making their final approach. Final approach. No lives should be all good here for the Buckeyes. There's not a lot to work with. Investment of the streak as well. You can definitely see where their heads were at with the play. Yeah. You find two. It's just one player always in from behind. And as Juice will shut down two. Last one up is excused, and he'll drop two. My goodness. That was a round there for Buckeye Cotton. And it was just the start. It was like the nine for two start that they kind of kicked off this round with. Yeah. Agreed. So much cleaner this time around. Bobcats not quite getting as much of a look as I think they were hoping for towards B. And yeah, it was a lot off of the exit like you were kind of talking about. From A, around the back through Chandelier. It's just red completely by Ohio State. So up 2-1. But hey, the Bobcats played some really solid defense they did. on their first go. So can they do that here once again? Again, they were a little bit unorthodox at this 2-2 split off. But they're going to go with the same thing over again. Ohio State. 3-1, looking to mostly focus their attention towards A. Definitely respecting the defenders this time around, although Tada gets the first, immediately traded, and the follow-up is there. So once more, Ohio State get the kills they need, and they are quickly on to A. They're just so fast with it, right? Opening engagements, everyone just kind of knows where to look. They've refined this so many times, and get some numbers on the point. Let's grab A as fast as possible. But Purple Pember is going to fly through here. It isn't a full commitment, and yet, easy pickings there, but... Maybe Lux has a window to get in here through the back as well. Excuse. They're trying to get oh. here in time, and they have been able to get here. They stopped that final tick from coming through so far, but Enigma finding the two kills there might be able to lock it in. Icy is also going to be dealt with in the back, so that should be the extra minute. Two minutes on the clock here for the Buckeyes to work over to B. And round, ooh, nearly gets the snap up to Tada in top bedroom. But now Bobcat does linger into the second floor. Juice still looking to cut on in. He got just one with the knife out and wants more than that, but shut down in the further play. Trades back and forth. Enigma survives on one health, but still up top. No one has been able to find Tada, and he may single-handedly stop this offense from finding any significant numbers. Yeah, and he just keeps finessing his life up here. Finally, Jax gets the kill, but it's just a little bit too late. Ah, uh, Lux. <laughs> it's his finger stepped on on the top rung of the ladder. And there will be even trades, allowing the Buckeyes to try to get out of spawn and into mid-map. Icy in trouble and will eventually be felled by the onslaught of Buckeye members that are still swarming over towards B. You gotta slow it down a little bit if you're the Bobcats, though. You have no presence now inside a bedroom, so you're gonna have to hold this from the front. Which is gonna have to come by way of gunfights. Excuse. Nose one's in the corner. Nade comes out. Shots over the top. Good with the help of Tada. Well, the kills are coming on through. The Whoa. defense is holding. That's three of the four. Make it all four as they shut down yet another push. Now the Buckeyes do spawn largely close. The Bobcats will not be able to make that much of a play forward beside where they currently stand. Although Lux wants to feel something out. And well, he's getting turned all over the place with all this action coming around him. And uh-oh, this is where things start to get troublesome. Excuse is low, gets taken down. Now the Buckeyes can stack. 13 plays 10. Clock stops at 51 seconds. A lot of this Bobcat hit's going to have to come through mid, which Juice is watching. Second tick of progress on the way. The Bobcats can't find kills, and this is how it ends. Second tick in. Last player to try to challenge. Denied. It has to be Icy for essentially a 1v40. He will not get there in time. A heck of an effort, but in the end, the Buckeyes survive through, and there's that 3-1 that I was talking about. It's just a <laughs> premonition that snuck out. Yeah, you knew what was coming, Al, and you could already see into the future as it is a 3-1, and finally an offensive round goes over, but I think you could start to see it unraveling once they dealt with all the players inside a bedroom and there was no one able to find a red through mid. They started to lose out on some of the lives. They kind of fell into the blender of the back, but they were just constantly trying to retake from the front, and while the AR is obviously held strong, good enough to put them away 3-0 here, and a very nice showing uh, through just about every single map here for the Buckeyes. Yeah, absolutely the case. I mean, 
it was a tall ask. I, I think that, you know, there is a lot right. of like, an anticipation around the Bobcats after what they did on land. Uh, but ultimately, the record reflects the result, I think, based on what we got between both of these two squads, um, yeah. which I think most people probably would have expected. You know, it's, like you mentioned, sometimes you just kind of have things going and flowing on land. You know, it's it's a tall ask to do the exact same thing against a very strong opponent here. And, you know, at least the good news here for the Bobcats is you can still look back upon the things that went well for you on land, reflect on what went wrong here today, and try to find a way to put both instances together, right? I, yeah. I think that has to be kind of the call as you knew for a fact that you're going to have to be playing through the LCQ probably anyways. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think like a huge part of that is trying to like find a way to bring like the same intensity that you would have on land, right? Like, like that's like the biggest factor when you talk about online to land, you know, with you know ping coming into maybe conversation a bit. But outside of that, I mean, it really does come down to, you know, like the intensity that you're playing with. Like there's more on the line, you're in the moment, you're beside, you know, your teammates, like everything means more in the moment. And it's difficult to think to, to find that, uh, you know, same flow, so to speak, when you are playing online, but you have to. You go through a season like this, just doesn't come to life here for them. And uh, another hell of a performance from round 25 yeah. to 30. This guy has just been putting up numbers. He had, what, 18 for 18 in, in the map one? <laughs> in the map one, yeah. Five non-traded here. Like, wow, man, this guy is just cooking. Yeah, he's pretty good. And again, this cooking is a the pretty... Hand, yeah, well, he's cooking up. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> It's just there's so many better options, dude. Oh, the... <laughs> Sorry, oh, that wait. one get you going. It did. It did get me going. <laughs> so, yeah, there's kind of the conclusion of that one. Not much else to say. The Buckeyes still look like a top 15 squad for sure. Lots of clean, lots of polish to play throughout the entirety of it. That improves their record to a very solid and very healthy position where they should be top four at worst in this Northeast. That mm. gains a little bit of separation on Rutgers. It sure. pinches the gap a touch. I'm in Akron. I'm not sure who else they still have to play. Um, they had to play Rutgers, actually, and they have to play Penn State still. So those are two matches that they're very winnable. The Penn State one for sure based on record, and then, of course, the Rutgers one based on record. You would assume there would be a slight edge there. So if all goes well, you would have the Buckeyes at, what is that, 8-3 and three then, and it would be like in a essentially just a head-to-head -head battle with Akron, mm. pending that they win their last matchup, which they likely will. Um, and that puts everybody uh, at a pretty solid spot in the top four. Lots of separation there. So yeah. the Northeast looks pretty solid as far as who our top four are going to be. And even more so, it's a pretty clear cut as far as who our bottom four are going to be as well. They have to go to LCQ. So final thoughts there from you. Anything uh, that stood out or no? I mean, I'm just really excited about this Buckeye, you know, COD squad. I just don't think we've seen them, you know, in this kind of form in a really long time. So there's, there's a lot of damage that I think they can do, you know, through this entire season is still left, you know, with the matches that they have to potentially uh, pick up a couple more wins in as well as, you know, make some damage happen in playoffs. So I think they're looking really clean and the respawns are, are looking scary, man. They're looking terrifying. I like that. Okay. So before we head to break, just one more a little bit of love point here for America's Navy, uh, the most highly skilled technologically advanced military force in the world. Navy is the esteemed smart force that pushes the boundaries of what is possible. Prestigious, strategic, innovative, and nurturing. And you could get your college education paid for at their expense. The Navy is also offering $180,000 worth of ROTC scholarships, which can be used to pay for full college tuition for students with exceptional academic and leadership credentials. Check out more at americasnavy.com. And of course, big love, fandom. We just stopped to break. One more match. We go back to the Southeast. UCF could be on display against High Point University. Big matchup for those two squads in terms of their standing in the region. See how it all unfolds when we come back.